Amen. The Bible tells us that his mercies endure forever. Amen. Amen. So we thank God. We thank him to be here, to be in this place. What a wonderful feeling that is in this place. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful Savior. What amazing grace. What a chance we have been given since the day we were forgiven. What a wonderful way. Here is I want to stay. Do you want to stay here? Do you want to stay here? Here is I want to stay for how long? For one year? For two years? Are you sure you want to stay here for the rest of your life? Amen. This is a life's commitment. Amen. It's not a one day or two day commitment uh, being a child of God, being a part of a ministry is not a one day commitment. It's not a two day commitment. It's not a three day commitment. It's a lifelong commitment. Amen. Amen. It is a life's commitment. Mm -hmm. It is a life invested. It is a life invested. We're just here for life. Amen. That's why when we are come here, we are called born again. Mm -hmm. We have been called what? Born again. We are born again into a new life. Into a new hope. We have been born again. A new life has just begun. Amen. Amen. So you don't want to die soon. <laughs> you don't want to die soon. A new life has just begun. And it continues and continues until the day that you are going to die. That's why I still believe in that uh, message uh, that we preached called Blessed. Amen. Yeah. Blessed is the man that thou choosest. Let me just uh, come again on this message and show it to you for the next uh, uh, 10 minutes. For the next 10 minutes and see where the Lord may lead us. Uh, did we say Psalms chapter number 65? I believe we should continue. We should continue, verse number four, we should continue with these Psalms. We should pick them up again. They are beautiful and go all the way to the end. They are beautiful Psalms. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach <coughs> unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts. So God chooses us and causes us to approach and the reason why he causes us to approach is so that we may make the house of the Lord our dwelling place so that we may make the house of our Lord our dwelling place did I say Psalms 65 verse 4 Amen that he may dwell in thy courts we shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house. Do we feel like the house of God is a good house? Do we feel like we do benefit uh, from our association to the house of God? Amen. Is there any regrets that we are a part of this house? I do not regret. Amen. I do not regret uh, everything that has happened has happened so well for me that they may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house. There is a goodness in the house of the Lord. Amen. There is a goodness in the house of the Lord. 
one of the goodness that we see in the house of the Lord is the presence of God. Amen. The, there is one goodness and that one goodness uh, that we see is the presence of the Lord in the house of the Lord. It's a very, very important uh, thing. Uh, that's the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Test and see that the Lord is good. Test and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. So there is a goodness that we receive from God. Uh, especially being born again is one good thing because it gives your life a new hope, a new purpose. It gives your life a new trust. It gives your life a uh, newness. Uh, it gives you the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. New power, new impetus, new encouragement, new comfort, new life. He blesses you physically. That's the goodness of God. That's the goodness of God. Amen. We, 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 we can go on and on. The Lord is good unto them that wait upon him. Hallelujah. To the soul that seeketh him, the Lord is good. Amen. So there is a lot of the goodness of God that we see in the house of the Lord. Praise God. That they may be satisfied with the goodness of thy house even of thy holy temple. So we find that we are blessed. Amen. And uh, it's a very, very important thing for us to know that we are blessed. And then as we continue uh, with this blessing uh, in, in the book of Deuteronomy, uh, in the book of uh, Deuteronomy, uh, there is uh, somewhere where I want to go with this uh, before I come to ministry. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, in Deuteronomy 28, we are reminded of the blessing. I want to dwell on the blessing and dwell more on the blessing. Why do I dwell on the blessing and not on the cases? Is because when you are in Christ, you are a new creature. Amen. When you are in Christ, you've been called to a blessing. You've been called to a blessing. When you are in Christ, the curse is lifted. The curse is lifted. This is one of the benefits, the lifting of the curse in Christ. The curse is lifted. To a point that the things that were difficult in the flesh, in Christ, he makes a way. Amen. That's why we say, God make a way for your people. God make a way. When things seem impossible, when the case is weighing heavy to a point that it is not possible for you to have your breakthrough. When things seem impossible, God shows his mighty love. And God intervenes right there. The curse is lifted. One of the things that are lifted is the curse. Amen. The curse is lifted. The curse is lifted. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, so, and also when the Holy Spirit comes in your life, which we call the anointing, uh, the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. We should continue to seek the anointing in our lives. You should continue to seek the anointing in your life. Amen. Amen. Uh, the anointing that lifts yokes, the anointing that destroys yokes. Praise God. So that's why we dwell on the blessing because we have been called to a blessing. 
Amen. Amen. We have been called to a blessing. Praise God. And not a curse. We have been called to a blessing. Hallelujah. When God called us, He wanted to change our lives. When God brought us to Himself, He wanted to change our lives. Therefore, we have been called to a blessing. First Peter chapter number three, verse number nine. First Peter, uh, if we begin from verse number eight, finally be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, loving as brethren, be pitiful, be gracious not rendering evil for evil amen not rendering railing for railing but contrarywise a blessing knowing that ye are there unto called that ye should inherit a what a blessing ye have been called there unto that ye should inherit a a blessing so when we we talk about a blessing we are not um, we are not far amen amen hallelujah we are not far hallelujah glory to god praise god come with this blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircums uh, upon the uncircumcision also for we say that faith was reckoned to abraham for righteousness so there is a blessedness that comes amen that's romans 4 9 come with therefore this blessedness upon the circumcision or upon the uncircumcision also so whether you are a gentile and you have been called to god you have been called to a blessing whether you are a jew you have been called to god today you are called to a what a blessing amen hallelujah so we are called to inherit a blessing and we are blessed deuteronomy 28 Deuteronomy 28 we are reminded that as we come to Christ as we come to the Lord uh, there is a responsibility that we have amen we must relax in front of the ministry we must relax we must be uh, we must be we, we must relax amen and uh, as we relax we should hearken we should listen amen a good child of god is a child that listens amen you should listen and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently. gently that is why we write notes because we are hearkening how diligently. gently Amen. We will listen diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Unto the Lord, unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So when a minister is talking to you, you hear the voice of God. Amen. When you are studying the word of God, you hear the voice of God. Amen. When Moses was talking to them, they hear the voice of God. Hallelujah. When the Holy Spirit is ministering to you, you hear the voice of God. Are you with me? Are you understanding this? You hear how? diligently to the voice of who the voice of god hallelujah i really liked it uh, in london when they were talking about the dead shall hear his voice 
because you have grown to be accustomed to the voice of God. I think that was powerful. Amen. So as you hearken, how do you hearken? Diligently, which means you become a student of the word. You become a student of the word. You cannot let anybody coming from externally come to teach you, come with more knowledge than you have. You must be a student of the word. You know this. You know this. You are a student of the word. You understand. You have got understanding. You may not be able to repeat it all and put chapter and verse, but when things are put wrong, you should be able to see that, no, 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 this is not it. You are a student of the word. You are a child of understanding. You are a child like the sons of Issachar, who knew what Israel ought to do, who were men of understanding. Amen. Hallelujah. So you hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do. As you listen, you are asking yourself questions. How do I implement this in my life? As you listen, you possess a burden. How do I implement this in my life. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the question you have. How do I put this into practice? How do I put this into practice? Amen. And uh, uh, that the Lord I command thee uh, to observe to do his commandments which I command thee this day. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Do you want to be on high? Do you want to be above only and not beneath? And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. If thou would what? Hearken. Amen. So the blessing is on hearkening. That's where the blessing comes in there. The blessing is on what? The blessing is on what? The blessing is attached to what? Hearkening. Amen. Blessed shalt thou be in the city. Blessed shalt thou be in the field, the fruit of thy womb, thy ground, thy cattle, thy sheep, thy basket. Blessed when thou comest in. Blessed when thou go goest out. We see all these blessings throughout life that's where I'm coming to I know I've said this to you over and over but the, the, the lesson here is the blessing is committed to you throughout life from the time you are born you come to Christ till the time you go down Till the time you get married, till the time you have children, blessed shall be the what? The seed. Amen. 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 Throughout life. Throughout life. We realize that this blessing is throughout life. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. Let to right. Let to right. Okay? All right? Let to right. Let to right. Throughout life. Throughout life. That's the blessing. That's where I'm coming to. Amen. Throughout. Throughout. From the time you're born. From the time you go to work. From the time you get married. From the time you have children, from the time you amass wealth, from the throughout. So this blessing is a blessing that's meant to track you. Amen. 
Hallelujah. I want the place where it says, and the Lord shall command, shall command the blessing. Shall command the blessing. Amen. Shall command. Yes, the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee. He shall what? Command. And in all that thou settest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord giveth thee. It's a commanded blessing. The Lord shall what? Command. When it has been commanded, it follows. When it has been commanded, it follows. When it has been commanded, it follows. When it has been commanded, it what? Follows. When it has been commanded, it what? It follows. Follows. It follows. Therefore, let us uh, be, uh, let us be uh, cognizant of this very fact that we have been called to a blessing. And this blessing is throughout. Come on, somebody, this blessing is throughout. This blessing is throughout. I, I, are you excited by the word of God? Are you excited by the word of God? You must be excited by the word of God. Amen. You must be excited by the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. You must be. You must be excited by the word of God. It brings life. It brings hope. It changes your life for the better. Amen. Don't be sorry. Hallelujah. Don't be sorry for the word. You must be what? Excited for the word. It's the one that will bring healing to you. Amen. It's the one that will lead you to the Holy Spirit. It's the one that will lead you to life. It's the one that will lead you to eternal life. It's the one that will lead you to the kingdom of God. I'm excited for the word. Amen. And uh, um, as you, as we um, uh, grow up in, in life, as we continue in, in life, uh, Jesus here in Matthew chapter number 5, uh, seeing the multitude, he went up into the mountain. Uh, uh, when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them. He opened his mouth and he what? He taught them. Blessed is the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. So when you do in the name, whatever you do in the name of the Lord results in a blessing. I said the blessing uh, is commanded upon you because of being a child of God. Amen. And putting the word of God into practice. And then as it is commanded upon you, it is a blessing that tracks you throughout life, we say. We talked about the, your seed, we talked about your produce. It's throughout life. You, you get it this one. You get it this one. And now, throughout life, whatever you do in the name of the Lord, no matter how challenging it is, it results in a blessing. Especially the most challenging things. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I beseech you therefore, brethren, to present your bodies as a what? Living sacrifice. <clears throat> it's not an interesting thing to be a sacrifice. Amen. That means when you are about to become a sacrifice, you are about to die. You are about to be tied. Which means it's not your will that is happening, but some other people's will. 
your will looks like it's restricted. That sounds to me like the house of God. Your desires looks like they are restricted. That sounds to me like the house of God. Not my will, but thy will be done. Even the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, talking to his Father, says, Not mine, but thy will be done. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. So here we see our Lord doing this contrary as it were to his will. But we know that his will was a perfect will. But as for you and me, we are different because when we want to do something else, the word of God challenges us. When we want to go somewhere else, the word of God what challenges us. When we want to say something else, the word of God challenges us. When we want to respond in a certain way, the word of God what challenges us. So we are here according to Matthew chapter number 5. When you look like you are a loser. Amen. When you look like you are a loser. When you look like you are restricted. When you look like you are embracing pain, that's where the blessing resides. Amen. Amen. Write this down. The blessing is unlocked by sacrifice. The blessing is unlocked by sacrifice. Or, turn it around. A sacrificial life unlocks the blessing. A sacrificial life unlocks the blessing. That's why we say when you look at somebody and you think that that person is blessed, you must ask yourself, how did they get there? All right. Uh -huh. You look at an accountant. And you see them, they are earning six figures. Some of them seven figures. You say, oh, it's so good. I also want to be an accountant. But have you considered what they had to go through to be there? You see a doctor, they are doing so well. They are now a doctor. They are earning six figures to some seven figures. I want to be a doctor. Hey, doctors are living an easy life. Oh, they are living an easy life. If you considered what it took for them to be there. You see a child of God. You go around and all oh, these Christians are rich. <laughs> Have you considered what it took for them to be there? Oh, they are living a good life. They are living a soft life. It's all because of offerings. No, 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 no. It's because of sacrificial life. A sacrificial life unlocks the blessing. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. That's why here he opened his mouth and spoke to them saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. It's not a nice thing to be poor in spirit. Amen. Is it a nice thing? To be poor in spirit? Okay. Uh, because um, we are home today. Because we are home today. Let us um, uh, take it easy. And uh, um, uh, look at this verse number three. Oh boy. The poor in spirit, it says, the humble who rate themselves significant. 
the humble who rate themselves insignificant. The humble. In spirit, who rate themselves as insignificant, the power of humility. Amen. Poor in spirit, you're humble. You don't rate yourself as insignificant. You don't rate yourself as significant. Amen. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Is it a good thing to be poor in spirit? I don't think it is. That's someone who's subdued. Amen. That's someone who shows a, a bit of humility here. Uh -huh. The qualities that are hard. Blessed are they that mourn. Blessed are they that mourn. For they shall be comforted. You don't mourn when you haven't lost anything. You don't mourn when you haven't lost anything. When you mourn, it means there is something you have lost. When you mourn, it means there is something you have lost. When you mourn, which means you are broken hearted. When you mourn, it means you are in pain. It's not worth writing, isn't it? Those that mourn. Those that mourn. It's not a good thing to mourn, is it? It's not a good thing. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the meek. Hallelujah. Are we in verse number five here? For meekness, we're looking at the mild, at the patient, at the long suffering. The mild, the patient, the, the long suffering. Those are the meek. Amen. Amen. And our Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, he showed meekness. As he was being led to the slaughter, he showed meekness. Amen. And meekness does not mean you are powerless. It says as a lamb, he was led to the slaughter. He showed a lot of meekness there to be led to the slaughter as a lamb. As a lamb. He was doing things that were meant to be done, but that were not a good feeling. It was meant to be done as a lamb. He showed meekness there. He was led to the slaughter. It wasn't a good thing. Amen. Do you know what Jesus Christ said to Pilate? He said, if I wanted, I could call a legion of angels to come and rescue me. He says, my kingdom is not of this life. If it was of this life, I would have called, I would have summoned a legion of angels. And he was not talking something strange. So being meek is not like you don't have anything. You are powerless. You are useless. No. You can have things and yet be meek. You can have power and yet be meek. I have shown meekness to some people, you know, because they deserved meekness. <laughs> not because I was ignorant. Or I was more ignorant than them, or I was poorer than them, but I have just showed meekness sometimes and said, okay, 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 drop it, leave it. 
our Lord Jesus Christ see he wasn't talking a, a strange thing because when they came for Elisha amen when they came for Elisha uh, Elisha said Lord open the eyes of the seven Gehazi we believe it was Gehazi at the time and he saw round about Elijah angels chariots legions Organized into an army. And to show that he had the power, he began to lead a whole army. The, the Lord made them blind, not blind physically, but blind in, the, uh, in their minds. To believe the prophet, follow the prophet, took them when you look. From the place that he took them into Samaria, it was about 12 miles. They were still following him. What was guiding them? And when they were there now, they realized that they were now surrounded and they could have been killed. He said, Don't kill them. Can you see weakness? Can you see weakness? Did you write that example down? A powerful example and Christ hallelujah it's not a strange thing because brother Paul tells us and, and say we have come unto Mount Zion unto how many angels innumerable it's not only brother Paul I have also told you isn't it isn't it I've told you what I saw. Innumerable. So being meek is not like we are powerless. Being meek is not like we are a void of resources, of heavenly resources. Being meek is not like we are desperately poor. No. You can be meek even if you have things. Christ was meek even if his father had promised him that if, um, if you don't want them to kill you, son, if you don't want them to kill you, my son, you can always summon these angels. I've put them in your command. Hallelujah. I've put this legion at your command. This earth could have been obliterated in a second. If one angel could kill 70,000, what would the legion do? And every religion of angels. <laughs> Yet he was meek. He allowed these human beings that he created to lead them to a cross that he had created so that he can die in order to save them. Amen. Blessed are they that do hunger and test after righteousness. These are students of the world. It, it, it takes an effort to write down notes, which, why, which is why some people come to church and they do not write down notes. But if you are in class and others are writing and you are not writing, when others prosper, you are not going to prosper that much. <laughs> You don't understand. When others revise, you have nothing to revise. You end up stealing other people's notebooks <laughs> in order to revise. But we need students of the word that will exert themselves to the word. That will exert themselves to meditating on the word. That will exert themselves to hearing the word. That will exert themselves to the study of the word. They hunger after knowledge. They hunger after how can I make it in the things of the spirit? How can I make it in the things of God? They hunger. How can I be led of the Holy Ghost? How can I be led of the Holy Spirit in my life? They are hunger and they thirst after righteousness. 
Is it a good thing? It, it, it is a, a good thing, but does it feel good while you are studying to pass? While you are revising? While you are studying? While you are going through examinations? Is it a good thing? So people that put themselves in difficult situations, it results in blessing. It always does. That's why uh, our apostle says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. It's not a good thing. It's not a good thing to show mercy. To show mercy. It says, bless are the merciful. Amen. It's always easier to quit. It's always easier to avoid people in need. When you see this one is in need, it's easier to avoid them. It's easier. But for you to be merciful. Amen. Hallelujah. Here, being merciful, being merciful, let me see what the Amplified says about being merciful before I put my comment on there. Let's see if they are in the spirit uh, uh, by being uh, uh, merciful. Are they merciful for they shall obtain mercy? He does not describe merciful. But to show mercy is not to be judgmental. That's the easiest thing I, 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 I can think of. Mercy is not generosity. No, 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 no. <laughs> mercy is not generosity. Mercy, to show mercy, is I'm not going to kill you, even though the evidence says you must die. I'm not going to punish you, even though all the evidence is talking against you. I'm not going to gossip about you, even though there is things to gossip about. I'm not going to destroy your character, even though I can. That's messy. That's messy. Amen. That's messy. Grace is a free gift. But mercy says you are not going to die. Grace is an enabler. Mercy is something that saves you. Be merciful. You know that is a lazy bugger, but you just give them food. It, it, that's being merciful. Amen. We should show mercy. We should show mercy. Amen. As we show mercy, it's a difficult thing to do, but therein lies the blessing of God. Can you see the things that ensure a blessing in our lives? Mm. Uh huh. Some people can be negligent with their lives, but we just show mercy. Some people can be failures in their lives, but we just show what? Mercy. Some people can make wrong decisions, but we just show what? Mercy. You need the ability to show mercy. Amen. So mercy is similar to judgment. Judge not that thou should not be judged. 
Blessed are the merciful, for they shall what? Obtain mercy. When the time comes that you also need mercy, mercy will be shown to you. Let's be merciful. So in the things that are hard in life, in the things that are difficult, in the things that are difficult to do, difficult to achieve, where the evidence says something else different, if you do those things, you will be blessed. Pure in heart, there is an effort for you to get purity in heart. In, in, in the heart of a man, <laughs> there, there, there are, you know, there are things that someone is thinking about, they are not articulating them, they are just thinking about those things. They are offended in the hearts. They may not say them, but offense. Eh? Offense. The questions reside in the heart. In the heart of a man. Amen. 
Amen. Hallelujah. That's why we say, pure, pure in heart. Pure in heart. Are you understanding this? It is not an easy thing to be a peacemaker. It is not an easy thing to be a peacemaker. Hey, even among brethren, it is not an easy thing to be a peacemaker. Do you know that some friendships, there are some friendships that are based on hatred. We've got a common enemy, therefore we are friends. <laughs> eh? We've got a common hatred towards that man, therefore we are friends. That's not friendship. That's, that's not friendship. That's partners in witchcraft. Partners in witchcraft are not friends. They're just partners in witchcraft. But there are some people that are going to be peacemakers. The Bible calls them spiritual people. They are spiritual. They are spiritual in their view of life. They are spiritual in their analysis of people. They are spiritual. They want to dig further and say, how could he do that? How could she do that? Could this be the reason? They try to, 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 to be impartial. Impartial. They try to judge not according to the eye. You know, there's some people that will see someone Someone who's doing well and they say, hey, no matter what it takes, I'm going to be on the side of that one. <laughs> Amen. Uh -huh. They see someone who's got some things, they say, ah, I definitely, I can't be on the wrong side of that one. So when that one is arguing, you, you find them standing uh, near this one uh, and challenging that one. Uh, and then why did you do that? And why did you do it? And why? You're not a peacemaker. 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 Amen. 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 Peacemakers. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Peacemakers. Followers of peace. Followers of peace. You have looked with the eyes of the Spirit and seen that these are two genuine individuals. They just misunderstand each other and you are coming there is a mediator, is an intercessor to make peace. You have seen these are brothers, they should not be fighting. Amen. These are brethren, they should not be fighting. You are coming here like Abraham. We be brethren, we should not fight. I believe next week, God helping us, we're going to talk about Abraham. We be peacemakers. We be brethren. We should always show peace. What will unbelievers say when they see you behaving like this towards me? Peacemakers, they think deeper. What will the wicked people say? When they see us parting, and not only parting, but fighting as we do so. Peacemakers. Peacemakers.
peacemakers. Peacemakers. Peacemakers. Do we have peacemakers? Do you believe you can be a peacemaker? This is the blessing. Otherwise, you will die under the curse. Amen. You die under the curse. If you want to be rid of pain, you've got to drink poison, medicine. Punish yourself by drinking this bitter thing so that you can dwell. Amen. Punish yourself by doing these things so that your life may be healed of the curse. The curse will be lifted. Others are still operating under the curse. You are permitting the curse upon your life because you cannot do some of these the bigger things, the difficult things. You cannot do them. Therefore, you allow the bigger curse to be in operation. But you want to bless the blessing that will come and replace the curse. It's by doing the difficult things. It's by doing these difficult things. Amen. Amen. But if you want to be seen of men, but if you if, if, if you are playing to the gods, if you are playing to the masses. If you want praise of the masses all the time, mm -hmm. this world celebrates people that are not merciful. This world celebrates people that are not pure in heart and that will articulate impurities. This world articulates people who don't care about the word of God, but about philosophy. This world uh, celebrates people that are tough. In that office, you have to be tough. You've got to be hard. There's no room for meekness. This world, they say if you are going to cry, if you are going to cry, if you are going to, you are showing weakness, you cannot show weakness. No one was poor in spirit that will be celebrated by this world. Praise the Lord. Bless the day which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. This world will celebrate the persecutor. Hmm? When men shall revile you, persecute you, and shall say, All men are of evil against you. This world is the one that will be what? Reviling. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can you do these difficult things? Can you do these hard things? So that you ensure that the blessing stays upon you. Stays upon you. Rests upon you. Sticks to you. Commanded by Jehovah, enforced by angels, commanded blessing, it's not going to leave you. Amen. Shall I close? Shall I close? Shall I close? These blessed people, even when you die, we have always said, you die right. Learn to die right. Learn to die in the Lord. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Learn to die right. Learn to die in the Lord. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Stay in the blessing. Stay in the blessing. Stay in the blessing. Mm. Hallelujah. 
Revelation 13, 14. I'm going to keep shouting it and singing it and preaching it and uh, uh, saying it. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, these things are worthy of being written. Huh? If an angel will write from heaven and he will shout from heaven and say, Write, is the pastor okay to say to you, Write? If the angel will say, Write these things, is the pastor okay to you to, to say, Write these things? Write, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. From henceforth, yea, said the Spirit, they rest from their labors and their works to follow them. You see, I got a revelation on this scripture a few years back. Their works do follow them. It means their works are absent from this life. They follow them. They follow them. They follow them. They follow them. Amen. That's why they will, they will be saying there was a, a, a prophet in the land. Prophecy is no longer there. There was a prophet in the land. They will say what? Follow them. Amen. Praise God. Blessed are the dead. How can you be a dead? A, a, people are mourning. But the Bible says blessed. Amen. Those that hold on until the end, the same shall be saved. Blessed until you die. Blessed at the point of death. Blessed. Hallelujah. Throughout life, this is the blessing. Throughout life is the blessing. Amen. This is the word of God that we have for you today and we command you to receive this blessing amen amen, amen. amen. hallelujah we command this blessing to stick upon you we command this blessing and we command you i command you today to keep this blessing by being able to do the things that are difficult some of you you have failed this money before in this Matthew chapter number 5. But you can always uh, redo. You can always try again. You can always try again. You have revived. You have failed to show mercy. Uh -huh. But you can do it again. God is a merciful God who gives another chance. Amen. Don't miss it this time. It doesn't mean you don't have the evidence. You may have the evidence, but choose to be poor in spirit. Choose to mourn. Choose to be meek. Choose to hunger. Choose to be merciful. It's a choice. Choose to be pure in heart. The evidence, the evidence, the evidence may be there. Choose. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not back again. Choose. It's a hard thing. That's why when we come to the word of God, they say these are hard things. Who can do this? In the name of Jesus, you can. In the name of Jesus, we can. Choose. Amen. Peacemakers. Peacemakers. Choose. Verse number 12. 
Rejoice and be exceeding great. For great is your reward in heaven. Great is your reward in heaven. Great is your reward in heaven. Great is your reward. We've been called to a blessing. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. At this moment in time.